And I've been sending them email after email after email, and I couldn't get any response. But this guy was doing an event in London. So I decided I would go along to the event. And at this one, it was impossible to get this guy on his own. He was speaking for six, seven hours straight. And so rather than battling for this guy's attention with 50, 60, 70 people, I went to the back of the room, and I decided I would make friends with his assistant. She was in London for her first time from Los Angeles, and I said, I'll take you out, I'll show you a few things. I did, and then when I email her next week, it's gonna be that much easier to book in the interview. This, can, this sounds kind of sneaky, this sounds kind of manipulative, but I don't think it is, because if you're going out and you're providing value to people, and you're gonna be a fun, interesting person anyway, then it's just being strategic in where you're aiming at. I got this point as well from a book, uh, Never Eat Alone by Keith Ferrazzi, another fantastic book I would highly suggest where Keith, the author, was going along to an event that Richard Branson was speaking at. Rather than trying to go and meet Richard Branson himself, he identified Richard Branson's mum at the back. He went over, he began chatting with her, and when Richard was finally done with all of the crazed fans in the room, he came over and he met Keith. And then from there, the three of them went out for drinks. Keith now knows Richard Branson. Meet and charm the assistant. This can become your lifeline in all that we come back to. Now, as soon as you have, get on this person's email radar. Send an immediate follow-up to say thank you. In advertising, there's a principle known as the mere exposure effect, which says the more exposures someone has had to a product or a brand or a company, the more credible and trustworthy they will see it to be. You need to, you need to treat your approach here like a mini product launch for yourself. When Apple come out with a new iPhone, they don't just want you to watch the keynote. They want you to hear about it on social media. They want your friends to tell you about it. They want you to hear about this new phone from as many different angles as you possibly can. You need to create this same effect for you in directly targeting this person. Now to get very practical, this email should just simply be a message of appreciation, something that shows a specific level of detail. You can reference a specific piece of work and show a deep understanding for what they do, but you're not gushy, you're not saying, you're not coming across as a real diehard fan, you're just showing appreciation for what they do. Now when you've done this, we already get to the fun part. We'll get to the pitch. So at this point, you began building your body of work. And at this point, I'll add the caveat. If you've come along to this event today, and for the first time ever, you've been exposed to the ideas of getting your health in order, getting your body in order, and at the same time, you've learned about attraction, how to go over, how to go out, how to meet people, and how to spark things. You would be very foolish to wait until you have your body in perfect ideal condition before you begin doing the latter. The two need to be done in tandem, and they will feed into each other. Going to the gym will make you want to go out and meet people more, and going out and meeting people will make you more motivated to go and hit the weights hard, or going out and doing whatever it is you want to do. Going and pitching people, will give a rocket under your ass for getting your body of work together, and putting your body of work together will make you want to get it out in front of more people. Do the two in tandem. So at this point, you're building that, you're researching this person, and you're going through this exercise of getting inside their head. You've met them in person. If they, ha if they have an assistant, you're beginning to charm them, you're getting on their ra radar, and you're sending a follow-up email. Your mindset? when sitting down to craft this email is simply to ask the question, how can I make this person more successful? You're not asking for anything at this stage. I wasn't going to Matthew and saying, hey, I would love to learn these things from you. Can you coach me on this, this, and this? I was simply trying to diagnose a problem that he had and help him with it. You're asking for nothing at this stage. How can I make this person more successful? Now, emailing people like this is really something of an art form, and it's something that hundreds, if not thousands, of books have been written about. I'm gonna try and distill right down to just three steps that you can use to write this email. This is Copywriting 101, and it's something that you can use throughout your life in any sort of persuasive email that you have to write. The first step is dream. What is this person's dream? The next, problem. What is a problem that they have? And lastly, solution. What is the dream? What is the problem? What is the solution? Dream. 
I know that you would love to become a New York Times best-selling author. Or I know you would love to automate your business and be able to go off salsa dancing around Argentina. Or I know that you would love to dominate your industry and build an empire. Whatever it is, whatever you've been able to identify from asking these 10 questions, state it at the very beginning of your email. And again, if you go through these 10 questions, the heavy lifting for this has already been done. You're simply just moving things around to craft this email. Problem. Now this gets a little tricky. In any sort of persuasion, the way to really motivate someone is to build a small level of pain. You have to really get in and build a level of pain with someone. I was reading a book the other day called Predictable Revenue by a guy called Aaron Ross, who was a consultant for Salesforce for a number of years and built them up to becoming a $100 million a year company. Now, when trying to sell Salesforce to other companies, Ross said that companies consider that their problem is that they need new marketing software. However, Ross pointed out that this is in fact not a problem. This is a desired solution. Problem, desired, solution. Getting inside this person's head, the way to really push someone's buttons is to get to the root cause of the problem. So in this instance, the problem was that their systems were in shambles, that they could barely send an email to all of their contacts, and their email marketing was a mess. Another example, if you are going to an events company, I need more people at my events. That is not a problem, that is a desired solution. The problem is that you're running on very thin margins and you might not be able to continue doing things the way you are if you keep doing what you do. To really hammer this point home, just for purposes of clarification, the problem is that you do not have a girlfriend. Or if I was speaking to a female audience, that you don't have a boyfriend. The problem is that you're lonely and you're unattractive. <laughs> really hammering that home. Now the solution, the solution to all of this, the solution is you. How can you help this person with this specific problem and where is your proof? The solution here really is your call to action. Now there are three other components to add in and this is the icing on the cake. Add in a single line of intent at the very top. And the reason for this by the way is firstly it gives context to the rest of the message that you're about to send and also when you open any sort of newsletter email you'll pretty much always see that it's a single sentence at the top. It just makes the email that much more digestible and makes the chances of someone responding that much more. At the bottom, objections. What objections might this person have to you coming to work for them? Would it be paying you right away? Would it be them fearing having to babysit you in their office for a number of weeks? Would it be the idea of commitment right off of the bat and signing a year-long contract with someone who's really unproven in their eyes? What would the objections be and how can you disarm them? So saying something to the effect of, 